Hello, friends. Welcome back to Little Faith Builders Preschool. So glad that you're here. So we're ready to sing our song. It's a happy day, and I thank God for the weather. It's a happy day, and I'm living it for my Lord. It's a happy day, and things are going to get better. Living each day by the promises of God's word. Woohoo! Okay, so Little Faith Builders is a place where your spirit gets fed, your faith grows stronger, and you learn how to be an overcomer. So what did we learn last week from God's Word, the Bible? Remember? We learned about how Jesus was talking to Nicodemus at night. Remember, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, which is kind of like a pastor or a priest. And he was talking to him about, even though a lot of the Pharisees did not like Jesus, Nicodemus did, and he knew that he was from God. And so what did Jesus tell Nicodemus? He told him, you must be born again. And Nicodemus said, how? I'm all grown up. How can I go back into a baby and go back into my mom's tummy? No, that's not what he was talking about. He's like, from the inside. Remember we talked about your spirit man, which is inside of your body that keeps your body alive and is peeking out your eye holes? that's your spirit, man. And when your body gets an old, old grandma or grandpa, you're not going to need it anymore. And your spirit, man, will depart. That means it will leave and your body will die. But that's okay because if you've been born again, you'll be with Jesus. You'll be in heaven, a wonderful place. Okay, so how do we get born again? We talked about that last week, remember? We have to believe in our heart and say it with our mouths. That Jesus died on the cross, rose again on the third day, and that he, that he has forgiven your sins with his blood. Invite him into your heart to be your savior. Now, if any of you did that last week, please let me know. I would so love to hear from you. All right, so this week we're learning about something different. It's something called the Last Supper. Now, why was it called the Last Supper? It's because it was the last supper that Jesus had before he went to the cross. And we're getting closer to Easter. And Easter just isn't about Easter bunnies. There's a reason for Easter that's really important. So this lesson from God's word is in the New Testament again. Remember, everything about when Jesus was here on the planet is in the New Testament. And we're reading out of Mark and we're going to read out of John. Okay, so uh, on the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go to prepare for the Passover supper? You know how you have like a big fancy dinner for Christmas? Well, this was a festival that all the Jewish people like Jesus had a big feast for, a fancy dinner. Uh, so Jesus sent two of them into Jerusalem to make arrangements. As This is what Jesus said. As you go into the city, he told them, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is the place. Go ahead and prepare our supper there. So the two disciples went on ahead into the city and found everything just as Jesus had said, and they prepared the Passover supper there. Okay, so Jesus told his two of his disciples, go into town, you're going to see a man with a pitcher, follow him, and then tell him the teacher has need of a room. And it happened just like Jesus said. So they're there. It was an upstairs room. So two of the disciples are there getting all the supper ready. And Jesus and the rest of the disciples come at night. So let's see what happens then. So, so Jesus got up from the table. He took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he had around him. Okay, so we don't really do this anymore, but it used to be that people, all people wore sandals where Jesus lived because it was so hot and it was dusty. And so 
often when you came into someone else's house, they would wash your feet there. They would have a servant there to wash your feet off because they were all dusty and they didn't want to get dirt getting all over the house. And also it was, it was something nice to do. Well, there wasn't a servant where Jesus was. So Jesus was washing his own disciples' feet, even though he was the son of God, right? He was their master. He was doing it for them. He was doing this lowly, menial task that nobody really wanted to do. Yet Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, he was washing his disciples' feet. Let's see what they said about that. Okay, this is in John chapter 13. Oh, and here's my picture of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Feet. See if we can. Okay, so here's Jesus. See him with his washcloth there? Uh, so he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he had around him. When he came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, why are you washing my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now why I'm doing it, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, but if I don't wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, a person who has bathed, that means like take a bath, all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you are clean. Well, that isn't true of everyone here. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right because it is true. And since I, the Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. How true it is that the servant is not greater than the master, nor are messengers more important than the one who sends them. You know these things, now do them. That is the path of blessing. Oh, what about you? I want to be on the path of blessing, don't you? I sure do. So Jesus was telling them how to get on the path of blessing. That is being a servant to all. Don't think, well, I'm too good to do that. N never think that. We're here to help one another. Why are we here on the planet? To glorify God and help each other. That's why God made us, and that's why we're here. So we need to serve each other just like Jesus did. He was being an example for us. He says, you see what I'm doing? You guys need to do that too. All right, now we're going to go back to John. Uh, no, Mark, sorry, Mark chapter 14. And verse 12. No, <laughs> I'm sorry, friends. Chapter 14, verse 17. In the evening, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. As they were sitting around the table eating, Jesus said, the truth is one of you will betray me. That means... That means, like, go against me. Turn me over to the authorities. So, And one of you who was here eating with me, greatly distressed, that means upset, one, uh, one by one they began to ask him, I'm not the one of mine. He replied, is the one of you 12 who was eating with me now? For I, the Son of Man, must die, as the scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for my betrayer. How terrible it will be for my betrayer. It would be far better for him if he had never been born. As they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and asked God's blessing on it. Then he broke it to pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, Take it, for this is my body. Now, was the bread really Jesus' body? Was Jesus really wanting his disciples to eat part of him? No, no, it was actually bread. But it symbolized Jesus' body. Jesus said, I want you to remember my body. Okay? And then, and 
And then he said to him, this is my blood poured out for many, sealing the covenant between God and his people. I solemnly declare that I will not drink wine again until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Okay, so was the wine Jesus's blood? No, it was actually wine. But the disciples didn't know it yet because Jesus hadn't died on the cross yet. But when Jesus went to the cross, he suffered a lot in his body. He was whipped. He was bruised. He bled. Uh, he was hurt really super bad. And then he shed blood for us because that's what washes our sins away, right? And so they're not there anymore. He did it for us. So at your church, they may have something called communion or the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper. And that is um, when they have bread and grape juice or bread and wine. And that is for us to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross, how his body was hurt so bad. His stripes for our healing and he shed his blood for our forgiveness of sin. We need to always remember that. Um, Jesus said, and when we take communion, and when we that's when we really, really remember it. And we thank God, we thank Jesus for his sacrifice for us. And the Heavenly Father, Father God, for sending Jesus. I don't know about you, but I am so thankful that I don't have to keep my sins, that Jesus' blood washed them away. I am part of his family because I've been born again. I hope you have too. All right. Now it's time for our letters. Have you been keeping up with your letters? I hope so. We've learned a lot of them now. And you might say, Mrs. Castor, there are so many letters. Why do I have to learn all my letters and their sounds? This is why, friend, because if you don't, you won't be able to read. We have to know all the names of our letters and the sounds of our letters so that we can read. So it's very important. All right, what did we learn last week? Let's say it together. Say it with me. You, uh. M, mm. Remember, you have to put the, your lips together. H. Are you saying it with me? E, E, E is a vowel, so it has two sounds, the E sound and the E sound. U is a vowel, too. I forgot to say that. The, so U has two sounds, U and U. Uh. Okay, what letter is this? K. K says C. C says just like K. This one, N. N says Mm. What's this one? Oh, it's a vowel, letter I. So it says the sound I, and it also says I. I and I. This one is P. Oh, a vowel again has two sounds. Letter A makes the sound A and also says ah. Like if you see something that scared you, you say that is the A sound. What's this one? T. S. W. R. R. D. D. Oh, another vowel. It's letter O, so it makes a sound O, and it also makes a sound ah. Like if you go to the doctor and he says, open your mouth and say ah, that's the O sound. And we have F for friend, and V, v the lip tippler one. Okay, so today we're learning a new letter. How many letters are in the alphabet anyway? Do you know? 26. There are 26 letters, and we're getting close to the end. This one is, what letter is this? Do you know? This is letter Y. It's uppercase Y and lowercase Y. Both of the letter Ys make the sound Y. For y -y Yarn and y -y Yak. Okay, you'll learn later that 
Why is kind of a tricky letter because it, has, it really has three sounds. When it's the beginning of a word like yak or yarn, it makes the yuck sound, yellow or yes. Uh, when it's at the end of a word like monkey, uh, it can make the e sound. When it's in, when it's the only vowel, when there's no vowels, y can sometimes be a vowel and make the i sound like by and my. I know, a little confusing. So right now we're just thinking y, yeah. Remember that, yeah. Okay, do you have your whiteboard? Are you ready to write? Let's practice making letter Y. Okay. For uppercase Y, we have to start at the top line, we slant down to the middle line, slant back up to the top line, and go to the point right there and make a stick to the bottom line. And what letter is that? Letter Y, it makes the Y sound. Yeah. All right. Let's do it one more time. How do we make uppercase Y? Start at the top, slant to the middle, slant back up to the top. That looks like a V, doesn't it? But you go to the point and you make a stick down to the bottom line. There's letter Y, uppercase Y. How do we make lowercase Y? Well, lowercase Y, we have to start at the middle line. Okay, so I'm going to make... I'm going to make a line so we know where to start. That's a little bit crooked, but okay. So when we make lowercase y, we have to start the middle line. And we slant down toward the bottom like that. Okay, then we go back up to the top uh, over here and we slant the other way and we go down. But we keep going, keep going, keep going. We make a tail underneath the line. Okay, lowercase y. Can you, can you make it with me? Start the middle line, slant down to the bottom line, go back up to the top line, and slant the other way. Lowercase y. What time does y make? Yeah. All right. Now, are you ready to practice your reading? How do we read? We say this every week. Do you remember how we read? We say the sounds the letters make. Then we have to stretch them out until we hear what the word is. Okay, so let's start with the Y word. Okay, so we're gonna make lowercase y. This is Castor writes evenly, more evenly when it's close to me, when it's facing me. So, all right. So what is this letter? Yes, Y, what's that one? A, what's this one? Okay. All right. So let's say the sounds the letters make. Here we go. Yeah. Ah. K. Now we have to stretch them out. Are you ready? Yak. 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 What is a yak? A yak. It's kind of like a cow, but it's bigger. They have them in Africa. Yak. Okay. What about this one? All right, so what's this letter? Still Y. What's this letter? E. What's this letter? Yes, S. Good remembering. Let's say their sounds. Y. E. S. Yes. Y. S. Yes. Do you hear it? What is it? Yes. It is the word yes. Good reading, friends. All right, now, I'm gonna erase letter. So are you writing these with me? We've been reading a lot of three letter words. So today I'm gonna try a four letter word. Are you ready? You can do it. I'll help you. Okay, so here we're gonna do this. B, E, S. Okay, we gotta stretch it. B, well, we forgot to say the name of the letters anyway. B, E, S, T. B, E, S, T. Now let's stretch it. B, S, T. 
Best. Did you hear it? Best. You just read a four letter word. Best. Like, this is my best hat. Okay, that's how we write best. Okay, so keep practicing your letters. Memorize what, what the names are and what sounds they make. And keep practice reading. All right, now we're going to watch our Mr. Harpin video about letter Y. Make sure to practice with him. Make sure to practice it. Pretend writing with your hands. Get ready, get set. Let's learn about the alphabet. 26 letters, that's it. Let's learn about the alphabet. Let's learn about the letter Y. Y is a letter. Y is a letter. Y is a letter. Y is a letter in the alphabet. This is an uppercase Y. Write it in the air like this. This is an uppercase Y. Write it in the air like this. This is a lowercase y. Write it in the air like this. This is a lowercase y. Write it in the air like this. The alphabet letter Y can be a consonant and it has a sound. Letter Y can be a consonant and it has a sound. I say the Y sound, yeah, 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 yeah. Now you say the Y sound, yeah, 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 yeah. At the beginning of these words, listen for the Y sound, yeah. My big dog Yogi, 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 likes to eat yams, 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 mixed with yolks, yolks, yolks. Ooh, it looks yucky, yucky, yucky. At the beginning of these words, listen for the Y sound, yeah. A baby yak, 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 rode on a yacht, 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 and played with his yo-yo, yo-yo, yo-yo. He had fun, yay, yay, yay. It's fun to learn about the alphabet And I'm really gonna try and do my best Learn each letter, learn each sound Learn how to write each letter down I feel so good deep inside I'm proud I'm learning to read and write Get ready, get set Let's learn about the alphabet 26 letters, that's it Let's learn about the alphabet Okay, I'm not sure why Mr. Hartman's mouth got, wasn't different than his sound, but it was still a great video. We appreciate Mr. Hartman making those videos. Now, in the description, if you want to practice letter Y, I have this sheet and this sheet that your mom or dad can print, and so they can... So you can practice letter Y. All right, now we're going to read the Y story. Can you read it with me? Let me get it up here. Here it comes. I will say the letter 
Why? Now you say the letter. I will say the sound. Yeah. Now you say the sound. Yeah. Good. The letter is Y. The sound is Y. Can you say it? Y. Yeah. Which word starts with the letter Y? Let's read to find out. I see the yak. We read that word, didn't we? There's a yak. I see the yarn. I see the yo-yo. I see the yogurt. I see the yam. The end. Okay. So remember about letter Y and keep practicing that this week, okay? Now it's time for craft time. So we are going to do a craft that we did this week at Little Faith Builders Preschool. Remember, it's a real preschool in Branson, Missouri. So if you are close, come visit us. We would love to see you. Also like and subscribe. All right, so we read a book called Mouse Paint. If you don't know that book, look it up on YouTube, get it at your library and read it. It's a good book about color changing. Because one of the colors that we learned about this week, we, we, learned, we studied about all the colors this week, but yellow. Yellow starts with what letter? Can you hear the first sound? What is it? Yellow. What's the first sound you hear? Yeah. Yes. Yellow mm. starts with letter Y. Okay, so we are going to make a mouse. And first we need a paper like this. And it needs to be like oval at one end and kind of pointy at the other end. Okay. Now, if you say, Mrs. Catherine, I don't have that big of a paper. It doesn't have to be that big of a paper. You can make it smaller. Okay. And but it doesn't have to be gray either. You could make it white. Actually, the mice and mouse paint have white fur. Uh, it could be brown or black. What other color of a mouse that you want? Okay. And you need to draw a shape. It kind of looks like an egg, doesn't it? And then you need to cut it out. How do we cut? Remember, we always put our thumb in the little hole and our other fingers in the big hole. And when we cut, we always point our thumb to the sky. And we try to stay right on the line, open, shut them, until we've cut it all out. And remember, Mrs. Catcher goes too fast. Just pause the video and start it when you're ready. Okay. Cutting out my egg shape, but really, it's a mouse shape. Okay, so here it is, and this is kind of like a mouse that you would look at from the sky, like if you were above the mouse and looking down. So you're gonna need a black marker. Okay, I'm gonna lower my screen so you can see. Okay, so here's the nose right here. So we're gonna make kind of a, A nose to the end of the paper. And we're gonna color it in black. I suppose if you want to do a pink nose, that would be okay too, because some mice have pink noses. Okay. Now back here, we're gonna back up a little bit and we're gonna make two eyes. Okay. Here and make the other eye. Okay, 
looks more like a mouse. Then back here, we're going to make their ears, make the mouse's ears. Okay, so we need like two circles. Okay, so then it kind of looks like a mouse that you're looking at. The next thing you're going to need is a piece of yarn. Have a piece of black yarn. You can use whatever color of yarn that you have. This is for the mouse's tail. Okay, so I'm going to turn over the mouse, and I'm going to get a piece of tape. Glue would work too, but it probably would need to wait till it dried, which I don't want to do, so I'm not using glue. All right, so I put the tail at the end, and... I'm going to tape it down in the middle of his backside. Okay? So he looks like this. These mouse. All right, now we are going to paint the mouse. Now, we're painting the mouse, not a color. <laughs> the, that mice really are. But if you have red mouse paint, you know that the mouse, the mice get into the paint. And so they end up being different colors. We are going to do some color mixing. Okay? So... You're going to need some yuck, yuck, yellow paint. Okay. And I'm going to do blue. You could do red if you want, but either with blue or red, don't use a whole lot. Just use a little because we want the, the color to change. Okay. So I'm going to put just a little bit on top. I'm going to get a paintbrush and I'm going to swirl them together to see what happens. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, is it looking like it's a different color? Can you see it? No, it's green and I mean, uh, <laughs> I just gave you the answer. Yellow and blue make what color? They make green. Okay, they make a green color. And to make it even more fun, I'm going to add some shaving cream. Okay, now shake it up. We need, we don't need a ton. Just need a little bit. Woo! Look at that shaving cream go. And we're going to mix it with our paint. Oh, it makes fluffy paint. It's fun to paint with fluffy paint. Okay. And then we're going to paint our mouse. Woo! Look at it go. Got a, a green mouse. What do you think it would be if you use yellow paint and then you put some red into it? What color would that make? Well, if you've got that, you might want to try it. But I will give you spoiler alert. It makes it makes orange. Okay, so you can paint. Paint your mousey with the shaving cream and the paint. Mm -hmm. And you will have a beautiful green mouse. All right. And that is the end of our craft for today. But what do we always do? We always do this before we stop. We give each of you a chance to invite Jesus into your heart. So you can have your sins forgiven and you can go to heaven, be part of God's family, right? What do we need to do in order to do this? Well, the Bible says in Romans 10 verses 9 and 10, you need to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Confess means you need to say it, okay? So if you believe that Jesus is God's son, that he was here on earth and that he died on the cross and then rose again on the third day, then you need to invite him into your heart to be your Savior and Lord. Are you ready? Let's close our eyes. I'm going to say it first, and then you repeat after me. Here we go. Father God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross for me. And pay the full price for my sins. 
I believe that you raised him from the dead after three days. And he is alive right now. Jesus, you are my Lord. Thank you for saving me. I am yours and you are mine. If you said that prayer with me, Jesus has come into your heart, forgiven you of your sins. They're washed away and you are now a part of God's family. That is so exciting. All right, friends, don't forget letter Y. Never forget that Jesus loves you. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.